Well, folks, good morning to all of you on this, uh, the day before, I guess, the day before of the National Truth and Reconciliation Day. Um, this is not a national holiday in Canada, but it's, uh, it's, a, it's a, a stat holiday, of course, to uh, government officials, and uh, the schools are closed, other various things are not open, but uh, it, it's, um, Alberta has not claimed it as a stat holiday as of yet, so I think Daniel Smith wants a vote. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see what happens here. I, would, I want to, um, I want to share the, the um, yeah, there are sometimes two kinds of Christians, and those who complain because God puts thorns on the roses, and, and those who praise God for putting roses among the thorns. So uh, that was kind of neat. So which one are you? Yeah. Think about that this morning. So. Um, I'm going to have some announcements, and uh, I'm going to start with a couple. I, I, I've got a few things that we need to talk about. I'm going to leave one of these announcements to, uh, to Fiona. Um, but I am placing an order the next week or two for name tags, and if any of you need name tags, let me know, and I'll put your name down on the list, and then I'll send the order in. And the name tags are only $5 each, but something you can, you can uh, cherish for years to come. Um, also, the ARC. So far, we've raised $450 already for the ARC. It's coming along. That's almost uh, a one quarter of what the whole thing is going to be. So uh, just keep, keep buying little squares and we'll make that ARC happen. So uh, by all means. Um, next, next week will be, of course, uh, October. And we're going to begin our food bank drive for the whole month of October. So uh, the food bank um, boxes will be here. Bring whatever you're able to for, uh, for the folks that uh, definitely need help from all of us, so the food bank begins. Uh, next Sunday is communion, uh, so be mindful of that as we all come together for the Holy Sacrament. And uh, those are the announcements that I have. Oh, Cody, uh, Cody has one too, so, um, yeah. <clears throat> Good morning. Uh, just an announcement that October uh, will see the beginning again of Sanctuary Sounds, so I'm, I'm, I'm seeing time ticking by really quickly. I will get a poster made and I want you to put October 16th on your calendars, if you will. The first concert is going to be titled, um, based on a choir anthem that I just handed out, it's going to be called Peace Like a River because it's going to be solo piano, the first one, and it's going to be a reflective um, hour of classical, sacred, some pop, and there'll always be a couple sing-alongs. And then we go on from there once a month on a Wednesday at noon. And in November, um, I will have uh, tenor Chris McRae joining me in a more Remembrance Day themed concert. So October 16th is the first one. Please mark it on your calendar. Okay. <clears throat> Good morning. I'm noticing some orange shirts around the congregation, so I know some of you certainly know that it is National Truth and Reconciliation Day tomorrow. Um, it's a good time for us to be thinking about what is reconciliation between the peoples of this land? And to sort of help us with that and to sort of share ideas, we have a little activity in the hall when you have coffee. We've got a few orange shirts made out of cardboard or paper. And if you like, you can write down some of your thoughts about that. Because I think it means different things to different people. And we're going to have more about this, I think, as we have our service this morning. There's certainly a lot of activities on, um, including one tomorrow here at the church, where we, as um, Yoke mentioned, 10 o'clock in the morning, we've got Tony Snow coming, who's an Indigenous educator and a very thoughtful, um, interesting man to listen to, to help us think about land acknowledgements. And then we're going to have a little lunch after. So if anybody wants to join us who hasn't already said, please let me know. Mm -hmm. Betty. morning. When you see me, do you think about money? <laughs> I'm very pleased to tell you that we are beyond 80% of the monies we need to raise 
for the Raising the Roof campaign. We're beyond $40,000. So thank you all for your contributions. This is the last week that you can uh, pick up your donation envelopes on the Narthex table. After that, we will either mail or deliver those envelopes out to the congregation who has not yet picked them up. So today's your last hurrah, and uh, give it a go if you haven't already done so. And for those of you who are shopping your houses, please continue to shop your houses. We will be developing the baskets as indicated in your program today and so uh, that will be happening fairly soon. Uh, I had a question about whether um, we will do more than one basket of each kind. Um, I would suggest to you that you bring whatever you've got that you think would be appropriate and uh, we will deal with it. Um, so those are the two things that I wanted to tell you and thank you again for your contributions to the fund. Yeah. Well, thank you, Fiona, and thank you, Betty. It's land acknowledgement. We share in these uh, words today and uh, every day. The land on which this building sits is land that has been walked on and hunted on and lived on for thousands of years. It, it's a traditional land of the Blackfoot people. It's with humility and respect that we give thanks that we are here. In the space, we're in touch with the Creator who made it and made us. So may we honor the story of this land, the people who live here, and the call to live with respect and thanksgiving. I want to light the candle of Christ and to bring the, the spirit of Christ into our worship service this morning. <clears throat> We're going to be sharing a song this morning while I'm doing the Genesis reading, and you'll find it, uh, Oh Beautiful Gaia, and it's uh, number 41 in, uh, in your More Voices hymn book, um, or the words will be up on the screen, I gather. No? No? Okay, then you better use the, better pick up the books if you can, number 41, and uh, Cody's going to be playing the music all through as I'm doing the reading, and then we will sing after at the end. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon this earth. God said, see, I've given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed and its fruit you shall have them for food and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth everything that has the breath of life I have given every green plant for food and it was so God saw everything that he had made and indeed it was very good and there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished in all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. 
So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Oh, beautiful Gaia. beautiful Gaia. Gaia means Mother Earth and uh, that fit in so well with, uh, with our creation stories that we've been sharing in the last few Sundays. We'll call to worship. You'll find them in your bulletin or the words up on the screen. When you sit in your easy chair in your home, whether it's uh, in your living room or somewhere else, can you hear the sounds around you? Possibly the sounds of an airplane, 
or maybe the whoosh of a car or a truck, the hammering of nails, or maybe the ticking of your clock. Well, these are people sounds. These are sounds which you hear every day, day in and day out. Sometimes they grate upon our spirits. If you listen closely, and ever so closely when you possibly are in a place of quietness, uh, can you hear the sound of the wind? the sound of the breeze, the, the rustle of the leaves, the song of a bird maybe, or possibly the buzz of a fly. These are nature sounds. They are always there but sometimes hidden under the noises that we make with our ever-moving pace of humanity. If we listen even closer than close, can we hear the distant wash of the waves on a shore? Can we hear the grinding of rocks as tectonic plates shift? Or can we hear the roar of a glacier as it calves off an iceberg? Or the vibration of light as it travels the cosmos? These are creation sounds. They are sounds of life and of death and sounds of new life, born once again. If we listen, we hear creation speaking we hear creation shouting, we hear creation crying, we hear creation singing. So when we listen and speak what we hear, when we help others to listen and speak what they hear, when we speak with those who will not listen and with those not willing to hear, we worship God. Hallelujah. So our opening hymn, folks, is we praise you, creator, number 293 in your red hymn book. And we'll stand with this song together, 293. I invite you to be seated and uh, we'll share in our morning prayer and our morning blessing. And the words again will be up on the screen. So let us share in these words. O creative and creating God, you are the sea and you are the sky. You are the rock and the tree and the creature of song and of rhyme and discord and of perfect harmony. And we know inside of ourselves that you are breathtaking in what you can do and in what your imagination can create. We call upon you this morning to bless each of us with knowledge in our bodies, our hearts, and our minds that you are with us in this moment and in every moment. Would you bless us with joy of all creation, with your desire for its wholeness, with your will for its renewal? in the most wonderful dance of the spirit, 
In the name of the Christ, who shone your love to the world, we open with these words of prayer to you, the giver of all things. Amen. So this is a time where we bless each other, and you can do the Numa stay together, and, or shake hands, and a hug if you would, but ask for permission first before you do that. So we'll do that for a few minutes. Here you go. All right. seated, if you will. I've chosen some, of course, different readings for, uh, for today as, as, a, as a, they come along with, uh, with creation and what have you. So I started with Job, and uh, it's verses 11 to 17. I know I put 12 there, but it's 11 to 17. Our first reading, is, it comes from this book, and, uh, and Job's an interesting read in, in, in that it, it doesn't deal with law or Torah or even history. 
Nothing in common with the prophets or the Psalms. It's classified as wisdom literature and contains a fair amount of poetry. This passage that I chose deals with God's righteousness and humanity's unrighteousness. And in looking in the Old Testament for the word silence, this passage popped out of me at that. Sometimes we must, we meet silence in that, in our dream world. And this is where it's Eliphaz has his visions. So I'm going to ask Sue to come forward and, and share with us this, uh, this passage from Job. Sue? <clears throat> I was interested to hear what Job had to say because I find Job a bit difficult. <laughs> From Job 3, starting with verse 11. Why did I not die at birth, come forth from the womb and expire? Why were there knees to receive me or breasts for me to suck? Now I would be lying down and quiet. I would be asleep then. I would be at rest with kings and counselors of the earth who would rebuild ruins for themselves, or with princes who have gold, who fill their houses with silver? Or why was I not buried like a stillborn child, like an infant that never sees the light? There the wicked cease from troubling, and there the weary are at rest. Yeah, so the second passage I chose is from First Kings, and. You know what, it's one of my all-time favorites um, in the scriptural text. Where do we find God? In the fire? In the earthquakes? In the howling winds or the mountains crashing to the sea? No, no, not always, because we find God mostly in the complete silence. It's like sitting by a lake in the early evening with uh, nothing but silence around you and hear, you hear the voice of God coming to you from the sound of the, of the loon. It takes your, your, your breath away. The finger of God just touched you, and your spirit is at rest. So I'm going to have you share this First Kings passage. <clears throat> then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your, your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of sheer silence. Here ends today's reading. Yay. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sue. Thank you. <clears throat> well, just remain seated as we sing this little hymn of illumination. It's Spirit of the Living God. You'll find it if you need to on 376, but the words will be up there. So, Spirit of the Living God.
Well, John 20, 19 to 23. I chose this passage from uh, the book of John for the gospel passage this morning, and it, it contains some of the most important actions that any Christian could claim. Receive the Holy Spirit. And this is what Pentecost is all about. And, uh, and the season that we're right in at this moment is the middle of Pentecost. And some folks may say, so what? Well, in my life, there cannot be a world where there is no spirit. There can't be a world where you're not touched by the divine or something which takes your breath away. Trust me, there can't be a world without love or kindness or gentleness or patience and oft times silence. And these, those other words that we celebrate such as joy and peace, of course, and uh, there can't be a world, a world without these, period. And Jesus said to them in the room, receive the Holy Spirit. And the world, by the way, is never the same after that. So I want to share with you this passage. You generally hear this right after Easter. John 20, 19 to 23. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the, where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Gospel passage for today. So the, where is the Holy Spirit present for us today? And that's my message I'm going to be sharing with you. Well, Pentecost, for me, anyway, is a huge step forward in, the, in the, the world of beginnings. Way back on May the 19th, when the season of Pentecost began for us, outside of the birth and passion narratives of the Gospels, I think Act 2 is one of the most familiar passages of Scripture when you're dealing with, with Pentecost. I would probably rank it third in importance in the life of Christianity and of the significance of all that had transpired in the sacred text. Easter tops the list, for without Easter, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be worshiping today as we are. Our belief system would be something totally different than what we believe in today. And eternal life will be only words and possibly not reality to some folks. The birth of Jesus will be number two. And as in any birth, this is of great impact. Just ask any new family where a new child was born into their lives and ask them how their lives have changed. It's diaper change time. You can imagine. And the birth story is so important because we now know that this birth challenges the status quo. The new reality has been birthed. And now we have Pentecost, this whole 26 weeks. The third significant happening in the text, and the church as we know it, begins in all of its world implications. We can call it the birth of the body of Christ. And the implications of the Pentecost moment are huge, for the God of Pentecost doesn't have an official language. And in today's sometimes blinkered society, it, it could point towards the English language sometimes. But on Pentecost Day, God spoke outside the walls of temple religiosity and outside the halls of political power. God spoke in the streets. This was a windswept protest of the borderless God. The divine voice which was manifested in all languages and in all peoples, was not only heard or dictated through the imperial Latin of the Roman occupiers, 
or the language of the religious elite who restricted access to God with oppressive temple taxes. Rather, God spoke in the vernacular or the lingo of the everyday and the everywhere. God gave a divine voice to a bunch of nobodies and to a bunch of commoners, or 12 of them. It's truly an act of liberation, both of humankind and for God. So we need to be mindful. We need to be mindful that language and the culture which it builds are the mortar or the, the cement of the bricks of power. Powerful countries such as ours have used language as a weapon and have sometimes restricted languages of other people in order to somewhat eliminate those who are perceived as different or threatening. One of the most tragic things which I can see in our societies across this whole world is the continual loss of dialects or languages for cultures and societies die with them. We no longer hear or understand the voices of the aged or the history of the people, for they are so intertwined with language, with story, with song, with spirit. Look at our banishing of our, of our First Nations languages in the residential schools and forcing the language of empire upon them. We're not one tribe. We are not one tongue. All this stands at the contradiction of who God had been revealed to on Pentecost. A God of many tongues, a God of many peoples, and a God who doesn't have an official language. So God is a God who speaks through all and is present in all, and not only becomes all languages, but also actively becomes alive through them. We should listen carefully to the gospel, the good news of Pentecost. On, the, on that day when God moved in, in, in fiery inspiration, God gave the divine voice to all languages. He gave it to the marginalized, to the street. And anytime a language or a voice crying out is suppressed, it's God's voice too that we're trying to silence, by the way. So we might do well to participate in Pentecost with this in mind, listening to the voice of God among the silenced and the powerless and the ignored, the forgotten, the oppressed, the nobodies. And guess what? Guess what? The peoples in the streets understood. And when voices stated that they were filled with new wine, they were filled with new wine. For it was totally a new wine. Nothing old here, for everything from now on was new. So why do you think that we call alcohol spirits? Really? For when God's power, when it was experienced, the Holy Spirit is fresh, is open, is disruptive and exciting. So as God's breath moved over the emptiness in the creation story and the world evolved, so God's breath moves on that Pentecost day. And this Pentecost season and heralds a new dawning for all of us. Only if you put aside our prejudices or our assumptions. So to put all this into some sort of perspective, this story of Pentecost moves from frightening visions and disruptions and bloody endings to a bright beginning, a whole new world, a new family, a new church. Pentecost is for you personally. So as you breathe in the breath of the Holy One to become transformed, the church was not created to be a fixed, stable resting place for an anxious culture. It was created to be an explosion, a wildfire, a revolution of a new age. There really is no ancient old church to come back to. And we are witnessing this at the very moment in most of the mainline churches. As we grapple with diminishing numbers, closure of buildings, uh, seemingly irrelevant to some. Maybe it's our Pentecost time as we re-envision who we are as people of God. As Pentecost was taken to the streets, maybe we need to take ourselves to the streets and out of our buildings and into the chaos of the world. May God be with us in what we do together in love. And I 
I leave you all with some, with some questions, a couple of questions. Where is this spirit of Pentecost alive in you today? And how are you treating your fellow human beings during this uh, totally unprecedented time in this history of humanity? And one final question. What if there were a world with no spirit? How would you change that? So blessings to all of you on this day, and may you live in love. Amen. Soil of God, you and I, more voices, number 174, or holy ground, and we will stand together as we sing this. I invite you all to be seated and now we we praise our God with our offerings this morning and uh, I will bring the plates out to the folks now. <clears throat> Just wait. 
the prayer. What a beautiful song it is. And I get to offer prayers on the, uh, the gifts that you folks have given this morning and, of course, the gifts that you give in different ways. Oh, Holy One, we give thanks. Give thanks from the abundance that you give to us that we can give back through the work of this uh, community of faith as we share in the good news, and not just in this community, but in the world. So we ask for blessings upon these gifts and ask for blessings upon each other. We give thanks. The closing prayers of the people, I have asked, uh, asked Fiona if she would uh, share with us some prayers of the people coming from the uh, being from Truth and, Recon Truth and Reconciliation Sunday. And I'm, I'm also reminded uh, of, uh, I know it's not only Truth and Reconciliation, but a lot of uh, indigenous people are going through what they call repatriation and trying to find where all their artifacts and their history is, which is all across the world in different museums, in people's uh, private collections, what have you, and trying to bring them back into their culture, back into the world where they belong. So, um, yeah, I'm going to have you come if you want to share with us. <clears throat> prayer for Truth and Reconciliation Sunday. Before I start, I must tell you, I am no expert on right relations with First Nations. However, in the work I've done with families who are in conflict and who've been separated for a long time, I've come to believe that it takes time for truth and history to be told and digested. Also, getting to know each other once again and reconciliation takes time. It's a journey, maybe a long journey. That's why I've written a prayer with a sung response which has an unfinished sound to it. It's actually Voices United 952 but you don't need to turn to it. Thanks, Silas, the words are up on the screen. So, um, in this prayer for truth and reconciliation, each time I say, great healer, help us on this journey of reconciliation, we will respond with this response. Could you play it for us once, Cody? Acknowledge a history of colonization and mistreatment of indigenous people around the world. It's hard to listen to some of the wrongs which were done. Killings, abuse, displacement, taking children from their parents. Yet it is important to listen. Still today there are injustices and there are those who deny there was ever any wrongdoing. There are still some who see indigenous brothers and sisters as a threat or as less than. Great healer, help us on this journey of reconciliation. Canada, we've inherited a mess, a lot of broken promises, inequities, people who are hurting and anxious. We pray for those calling for justice. We pray for all who are courageously telling their stories despite the pain it brings. 
We affirm that every child matters and every person's story deserves to be told. Help us to be willing to listen in love and respond as you would have us do. Great healer, help us on this journey of reconciliation. remember families split apart by violence and trauma, families with missing members, women and children who disappeared, others who've taken their lives or died in despair. We acknowledge the loss of culture and traditions which Indigenous people have suffered. We pray for those supporting and caring for wounded people and working to rebuild communities and a sense of worth. Great healer, help us on this journey of reconciliation. We live in hope of a new, better relationship between Indigenous people and others in this land, and that more people join this reconciliation journey. We pray for leaders who are toiling to find a way forward to right some of the wrongs of the past. Here in this place, help us to find opportunities to get to know and learn from each other so we can learn to live together respecting and supporting each other and the beautiful land in which we live. Great healer, help us on this reconciliation journey. We ask for all this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we offer the words of the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The words are commissioning, and we, sh we share this together. The seasons of a church year come and go, and the seasons of the calendar year come and go. And the seasons of our lives change from one to the next. The call of the gospel remains constant. Jesus' call to come follow me is spoken each day. May God give us what we need to answer. Here I am. Send me. Amen. Well, final hymn 296, This is God's Wondrous World. I invite you to stand. We sing this together.
So may the blessing of Jesus who announced God's righteousness, of the Creator who fills earth with beauty, and of the Spirit who nurtures all, bless, inspire, and empower each of you. Amen. So folks, go in peace and come and join us in the upper hall for some uh, snacks and beverages and conversation. <clears throat>